This is the first in a series of videos about the optical properties of solids and how we measure them. Let's start by talking about why we care about interactions of light and matter. When we do astronomy, all we have is light. So if I have a star and there's some light coming from that star, then the light from that star is going to hit my telescope. And if it doesn't hit anything in between, then I'm getting light from the star and I can learn about the star. But if there is material between me and the star, that could be in the atmosphere, it could be out in space, it could be really close to the star, it could even be the atmosphere of the star, then I need to understand how light interacts with that matter to understand the light that I'm receiving. So we still get light leaving the star, there's the same distribution of wavelengths, but what gets to me depends on the material in between. There's going to be some light that gets through, some light that is absorbed and then re-emitted, usually at longer wavelengths, and some light that is scattered, so it doesn't change wavelength, but it's reflected off at different angles. To understand the optical properties of solids, the first thing we need to think about is how does light actually interact with a solid particle? And to do that, we need to talk about what light is. So light is just a, an electromagnetic wave. It is uh, a magnetic field and electric field, and they are perpendicular to each other, and they are oscillating and moving in a direction that's perpendicular to both the magnetic and electric field directions. What really matters is we have an electric field and a magnetic field, and it is that that is going to interact with our solids. So what happens when light meets matter? Well, it depends on what the matter is made of. But essentially, you can think of it as being, if I have something that is a charged particle, so here I have a charged particle of charge negative Q, and here I have one of the charge positive Q, and they will react to the electric field. So as the field goes up, you're going to have the positive charge and the negative charge move in opposite directions. And as it goes back down, they'll move back towards where they were before. And as it moves in the opposite direction, then the charges move in the opposite direction. So we'll get a motion of charged particles. So we really need to understand what matter is made of and how that relates to how it interacts with the electric and mag magnetic field oscillations. So we talk about light and materials. There's lots of different things that we can break this down into. We can talk about the absorption of light. So light hits some material and it is absorbed. And then that's going to give us different colors depending on the wavelengths of light that is absorbed or transmitted. That so could be transparent material. It could be opaque material. And that relates to the atomic and molecular structure of the material. We're also going to be thinking about how light actually passes through. So if it's transparent, light passes through, it is propagated through the material and we get refraction, but we can also get reflection at the surface or internally. And we'll also get dispersion of the light. And so we're going to investigate this usually through somewhat transparent materials. But what we care about is what happens to the light as it is passing through a material. And then we also have scattering of light. That is, that light will hit a particle and bounce off. What exactly happens? The light is scattered off in different directions, uh, and that may be wavelength dependent. We won't get into diffraction quite so much. OK, so when we talk about the interaction of light with matter, let's start with something that's familiar. Let's think about what we see in the optical or visible. Just a little aside here. Optical and visible are often used interchangeably. Technically, visible is what we can see with our eyes. So those are the wavelengths that our eyes are sensitive to. Whereas optical, although it encompasses those wavelengths and colors, may or may not include other wavelengths. That is to say that in some cases, people include some infrared and some ultraviolet into the optical wavelength range and not just visible light. So what I mean here is visible, what we see. Well, when we look at solid materials, if we're looking at a metal, it's usually shiny. Water and the, the glass we put in windows is transparent. If we've got stained glass or gemstones, they are somewhat transparent, but their color is dependent on what wavelengths they absorb, what colors they absorb. And then we have things like milk, where it scatters light in all directions. So it is opaque in the sense that we cannot see through it. But at the same time, the light gets all the way through. That's why it's white. So when we're thinking about um, how different types of materials interact with light, we need to think about what it is that's going on that causes us to see these things. 
But we can actually classify all of these things into some fairly general properties of the materials that we're looking at. So let's talk about those properties. We basically have reflection of light, propagation of light, and transmission of light. Here you can see a, a little sphere with light being affected in different ways. I'm going to do that as a slab because it's just a little bit easier to follow. So here I've got some light. It's coming in. It's my incident light, and it's going to hit this slab. And when it hits the slab, some of that light will be reflected. Some of it will go into the material, into the slab of material, and will propagate through. There may or may not be a reflection at the other side. And some of the light will come out the other side. So we have reflection, transmission, and the propagation through. So what phenomena are actually happening during that propagation? We've got refraction. The light may change direction as it passes into the material. We have absorption. Light may actually be absorbed. And then in general, it will be re-emitted. So luminescence here is a general term for when light is absorbed and re-emitted. If we absorb lots of light, we're absorbing energy. So if our slab of material absorbs lots of light and doesn't re-emit it through luminescence, it will heat up and eventually be destroyed because it will get too hot. So in general, we'll, we think of this as being you have absorption, but then that energy will be re-emitted in some way. And then we also have scattering. There may be impurities or little surfaces inside our material, and then light will bounce off of that. So this is a form of reflection, but in this case, it's happening internal to our slab of material. So just to define these properly, refraction is the reduction in propagation speed. So basically, the speed of light changes in a medium, and it causes light to bend. Absorption happens if the frequency of the light is at a resonant frequency of the medium. We'll get into exactly what that means in some future videos. But for now, you can think of it as being certain wavelengths, certain colors will be absorbed. And transmission is related to the stuff that's not absorbed. So we have light that absorbed and light that is not absorbed makes it through. Then we have luminescence. This is the production of light due to excitation. Some light gets absorbed. It then excites the atoms or molecules, and that gives rise to some emission of light at a different wavelength. And then we have scattering, and that's where the light changes direction. So those are our basic definitions. Now, I want to follow up on the last of those definitions, which is scattering. And that brings us to a question that a lot of people ask, and actually most people don't know. And that is the question of why the sky is blue. Okay, so why is the sky blue? Well, it has to do with the fact that sunlight is scattered by particles in the atmosphere. It's mostly molecules and some atoms. So here I've got a cartoonized version. I've got light coming from the sun. The purple here is misleading, but basically the blue light is hitting atoms and then being bouncing off, whereas the red light is really not bouncing off any atoms. It's just going all the way through and getting down to the ground. As the light is uh, passing into the atmosphere, the blue light isn't getting down to the ground. It's bouncing off an atom and then another atom and then another atom and then another atom. And so if we're looking from the ground, it looks like the blue light is coming from all directions in the sky. The green light makes it further down, but the red light makes it all the way down to the ground. This is a phenomenon called Rayleigh scattering. But what really matters is the direction that we're looking in. So here I've got, if light is coming in from the top and it's going to hit these particles, if I'm looking from the bottom, that would be from the ground looking up at the sky, then I'm looking at the sun, I'm not seeing all of the light. I'm seeing the light that doesn't get deflected out of the way by the particles. With the blue light, it's being deflected out of the way, and so it is being deflected in all directions. So if I'm looking from over here or over here, it's going to look blue as well as from the ground, whereas the red light does not get deflected and makes it all the way through. So this idea of scattering of light by particles, it depends on the relative size of the photons, that is the wavelength of the photons, and the size of the particles that are doing the scattering, in this case, atoms and molecules. So for visible light, we have light is around 500 nanometers. Remember, visible light is 400 to 700 nanometers. But our particles are 
atoms and molecules. They are maybe a few nanometers across. And so what we have is that the size of the photons, the wavelength of the photons is much larger than the size of the particles. In that case, what we get is called Rayleigh scattering. So I've got light coming in in this direction. And the longer the wavelength, the more likely it is to go straight on. And so what we've got here is the light will be deflected if it is blue and it will go straight on if it's red. To quantify that, let's think about it's going to be going as one over the wavelength to the fourth power. So that is the intensity of light that is scattered. And so what we get is that for blue light, which is 400 nanometer light versus red light, the blue light is going to be scattered seven over four to the power of four times more than the red light. So there will be 10 times more scattering of the blue light compared to the red light for the same intensity. When we have a blue photon or red photon coming through, the blue photons are more likely to be scattered. The red photons are more likely to go straight on. So there are some good implications of this. We already talked about blue sky. So here we can see the sunlight's coming in and then the blue photons are scattered in all directions. But it also means it's why we get red sunsets. When we're looking at the sun at sunset, we're looking through much more atmosphere than when we're looking straight up. And so we're actually getting a lot more scattering. And so there's a lot more blue light list missing that the red light comes straight through that you're gonna get a red sunset. It's also what makes the uh, lunar eclipse red because we're actually looking at the light of all the sunsets on the planet in that moment. But it also has an effect on starlight. So starlight is also passing through the atmosphere. So the photons behave just the same way. The blue ones will be scattered out of the line of sight and the red ones will go straight through. And so we'll get tendency for starlight to look more red than it really is. Let's think a little bit more about different types of particles. So here I've got a few examples. I've got some water particles here. The water is transparent, but it still impedes our ability to see. But it, we can kind of see vaguely what's going on. But if we go to fog over here, the water particles are much more densely packed and much, much smaller. And now it's really affecting our ability to see through into what's going on. So the size of the particles and how densely packed they are has an effect on what we can see, even for the same material. And then if we look here, this is a big sandstorm. I believe this one was over Phoenix. And you can just see here, you just about see into the sandstorm here, but mostly we can't see into it. The dust particles are interacting with light in such a way that we really can't see into it. It's completely opaque, at least at visible wavelengths. So let's revisit those dust particles and water droplets. So for the small dust grains, small dust grains are of the order of one nanometer across, and we still have a wavelength of 500 uh, nanometers. So we've got one micron size dust grains and 500 nanometer wavelength. So they're approximately the same. And in this case, there is still a wavelength dependency, but it's not as strong. So instead of going as one over lambda to the four, it goes as one over lambda. So we still get more blue light scattered than red light, just not as much as we do for those very small particles. And what this actually gives rise to is it increases the redness of our sunsets. So when we're looking through a lot of dust through to the sunset, there's enough along that line of sight, we're gonna get more reddening and it's gonna make the sunset look prettier. This is why pollution makes for pretty sunsets, as do volcanoes, they throw ash up into the atmosphere and that's lots of dust particles. Even things like the forest fires that have been plagued the Western US, we have more ash and more small particles up in the atmosphere and it will affect how our sunsets look. But if we go to bigger particles, so now we're getting to water droplets where they're actually much bigger they're several microns across. And now they're much bigger than the wavelength of light. And so now they just scatter light you know, the same, no matter what the wavelength is. They don't care about the color. And so what we get is that clouds appear white because it doesn't discriminate between the different colors. It just scatters them all the same amount. And so just to summarize this short introduction to the optical properties of solids, uh, we started talking about what's happening during the interaction of light with a solid. We talked about some of the terminology and what reflections and propagation and transmission are. 
We talked about the definitions of these interactions that happen during propagation of light through a material. And then we talked about the scattering of light, especially in our atmosphere, and how it can give how it gives rise to the blue sky, red sunsets, white clouds, and in fact, fog.